I've just got to talk with you about Summer Wells and the call. Everyone's talking about Summer Wells and this new phone call, newly leaked phone call apparently, where unfortunately it contains some horrible details. Everyone's talking about it. I don't really know who all the players are, but I'll give you the gist of it. And if you haven't heard the phone call yourself, you can visit the links below to hear it. Apparently the phone call reveals what either a social worker or a psychologist allegedly treating the youngest brother of Summer Wells. You know, they were pretty close. You could tell those two were close in all the photos and videos. According to this leaked phone call from this woman who signed an NDA, but felt the need apparently to unburden herself with what she heard from this little boy and what he saw. It's telling us what Summer and her brother may have endured allegedly because of her parents. For this video, I want to focus on the contents of the call and talk about them with you and not necessarily all the drama surrounding it. You know, some people are acting all high and mighty and oh, how could you release a call? Oh, it's a horrible call. And how could you do this and blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm more interested in focusing on what the call said and trying to figure out if there is truth to this call or if it's a bunch of fiction. I wanna go over a lot of reasons why I believe the phone call could really be true. It could really tell us what happened to Summer Wells. She's a little five-year-old girl. She was five when she went missing out of Rogersville, Tennessee, and it became this huge case and a lot of people were side-eyeing her parents, Don Wells and Candace Bly, because their story about how she disappeared, when she disappeared, it never just held water. And now with this new phone call, people are kind of perking up their ears and thinking this could be true. First off, I'm not going to fault this social worker or psychologist or whomever signed this NDA who apparently still felt the need to unburden herself of what happened. Especially when you work in an industry like that, if you're a police person or what have you, you have these horrible images in your mind or thoughts in your mind and you want to unburden them, of course, through prayer, through speaking to other people, trusted sources, and sometimes stuff leaks, rumors get out. And I think that's what's happened here. We're all human and it happens. We are not these perfect robots. However, this person likely is a mandated reporter. So to hear a story like this, I'm sure she's already told police months ago, it's just, I believe police just haven't found Summer, even though they may know what happened to her. And according to this call, Summer is likely not on this earth anymore. Now, again, I'd like to warn you, this could be complete fiction. Our human minds, when we have a missing point of a story, we naturally like to fill in the gap. So I always leave room for this could be just a rumor. Although a lot of rumors end up being true, this could just be some rumor where a human mind might have needed to concoct a reason why a little five-year-old girl disappeared from her yard, a very isolated rural yard, you know, on top of a holler in Rogersville, Tennessee one day and no trace of her is found. Well, that doesn't seem logical to our minds. So sometimes we have to fill in the gaps with fiction. But again, let me show you the reasons why I think the contents of this phone call were true. The gist of the phone call is that Don and Candace owed a bunch of money to some drug dealer or someone and they couldn't pay their debt. Okay, that part sounds true. We know from the history, from the criminal history we've seen, from the behavior we've seen displayed by both Don and Candace, this part could be true. Allegedly, they could not pay their debt. So in essence, they agreed to give away their two youngest children, Summer and her brother, as a sort of ransom. Do drug dealers do this? Take children as ransom? Perhaps, I have no idea. It could happen. I just read a story the other day about about some car was stopped because their window tent was too dark and thank God they were stopped because someone was taking a seven-year-old somewhere they shouldn't have been. Yeah, this is believable. It's not that far-fetched. The brother who allegedly was supposed to be taken away with Summer is being treated at a place I won't name. It was named, I believe, in the phone call, but 
Apparently he was so traumatized by what he saw, he just stares at the walls, but he was obviously able to express this story to his counselor. He said that Summer realized what was happening when she was going to be taken away. I'm not sure who took her. I'm not sure where the meeting spot was. I don't know any of those details, but what was said was that Summer, smart little girl, realized something's wrong here and she started to run. I could also see that happening. She was a really smart little intuitive girl. I can imagine the fear at realizing something is wrong here. Even being in your family of origin and only being five years old, you still know something is amiss. I can see Summer running off trying to get away from these people. Allegedly she got hurt and there was apparently a life-ending maneuver across the neck and that's as far as I know. If the little boy witnessed this, indeed that would be traumatizing and I don't know where Summer was taken after that point. I do wonder how did, if this is true at all, how did Don and Candace plan to explain their two youngest children missing? For what months or how long were these two supposed to be ransomed? This all falls in line, in my mind, with the events we've seen prior to Summer going missing on June 15th, 2021, more than one year ago, and the subsequent strange behavior that happened afterward. Case in point, that last vacation to Wonderworks. If you find my old video, I've linked to it below on Spotify video, it talks about Summer's last vacation. It was to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, that Wonderworks place. The one where she looks really droopy and leaning on her brother and it was very recent to her going missing. So I thought, Maybe this really was the last vacation. If Candace knew, and this is a big if, this is a big allegedly, if Candace had made some kind of deal, if she knew what was going to happen, maybe the twisted logic said, yeah, let me take them on a last vacation, a last hurrah. I'm really going to miss these kids. Maybe in her lucid moments, but then there are the desperate drug moments which make people do anything, apparently. We don't really know what kind of drugs are rampant down there. I'll tell you what, it's probably a lot more than the cornbread mafia and marijuana. We know how much opiates have invaded the nation and the cravings and part of me is thinking why wouldn't Don give up his car instead of giving up his kids? But I know cars can be traced perhaps even more readily unfortunately than children and that car would have been repossessed anyway maybe they cared more about the car who knows if any of this is true so that last vacation in wonderworks was kind of perhaps a last hurrah in my mind almost a way to say goodbye to the kids and if summer looks so listless and was she drugged then was that like a preventative thing? Remember Hunter's testimony when Chris McDonough of the interview room interviewed Hunter and his mom and others. Hunter claimed he saw some text on Candace's phone the day that Summer was reported missing, claiming it's done. If this is true, what was done? Does that fall in line with what this social worker psychologist is saying about what the young boy witnessed? And if you remember that Dudley Anjan guy, I might have his name wrong, Dudley Anjan, something like that, a co-worker with Don, you'll be able to find his interview, Jonathan Lee Rich's channel. They interviewed Dudley at a restaurant and you might remember him talking about Don Wells' odd behavior the Monday prior to summer going missing. Dudley spoke about Don being in the bathroom of a home perhaps they were working on, Don looking like he lost his best friend. Those, I believe, were Dudley's exact words. Don looked like he lost his best friend and we know how close he brags about Summer felt to him. She felt this innocent love for her dad who should have taken care of her. Summer felt close to Don, but Don's protection over his little daughter is questionable. So why would Don, the day before Summer was reported missing, why would he look like he lost his best friend? If he's sitting there in some bathroom looking at his phone as if he got a text that was really shocking to him and saddening to him, is that when he found out the news that Summer and her brother had to be collateral for this debt he owed? Why wouldn't they even offer up themselves before offering up children? Maybe dealers don't think Don and Candace were that valuable compared to kids, but it's a sad story. 
So that's another clue, the second clue, that makes me think this story could very well be true. Maybe Don knew the day before Summer was reported missing that something was going to happen to her. Another third strange thing going on, if you watch Jonathan Lee Rich's channel, you'll see where he recently interviewed a woman at those horse stables at the swimming pond where Summer swam in that last video which could have been another kind of last hurrah. Jonathan went down there, he interviewed this woman, the woman at the horse stables. She said that Grandis's truck was there most of the day. And that was strange. That was news to many of us because according to Candace, their stop at that swimming pond, horse swimming pond, only lasted 20 minutes or so. You know, Candace makes real light of that situation, but we can tell more was going on, especially when Chris McDonough interviewed Candace at the horse swimming pond and she said everything was in slow motion. Something happened there, but why would the truck have been there most of the day? And it also gives new meaning to that last video of Summer in the car where Candace says, oh, I was just trying to catch her with her arm raised. Was it like a memento? Did Candace know something was about to go down? And was it another memento? Maybe Summer didn't experience a dry drowning at the swimming pond horse stables like I thought. Maybe something was prearranged to get rid of her. Then there's Candace's weird behavior throughout the whole thing. From the day Summer went missing, all these different stories that were told to 911. The mom went for a walk or a run and she came back and Summer was gone. Initial reports that came out that said, oh, Summer was last seen walking outside her home. Candace is changing stories. We've heard it all. You know, Grandis taking a nap. Grandis giving Summer a piece of candy. Candace saying that Summer went downstairs, mom, oh, to play with her toys and immediately going crazy searching for for her and Don's wild story. Oh, she got gone. Someone took her, someone snatched her, someone did this, someone did that. There's been a lot of confusion. And of course, missing persons cases can be confusing, but not necessarily this many wild stories and the parents don't necessarily act like this. Even innocent parents, and they're all innocent until proven guilty, innocent parents have had, you know, shade thrown on them, like Elizabeth Smart's dad, or people who initially people think maybe they had something to do with their child's disappearance, and they really didn't. They may have a modicum of doubt cast their way, but in those instances, the parents did not act like Candace and Don. A lot of parents who are truly innocent get out there and they really want to talk about their missing child. They want photos displayed. Candace is saying, nobody has a right to display Summer's photos except me and her dad until she switched up that little narrative. It kind of shows ownership of a child in an unhealthy way. And maybe that leads to potentially what happened to Summer. Candace's weird behavior on Dr. Phil, the fact that she wouldn't come out and give an interview for a while, and then she finally gave one, she appeared on the news, and then she ultimately appeared on Dr. Phil. She freaked out over the cornbread mafia suggestion. It sounds scary. I feel like I'm being interrogated. All this mess, guilty knowledge, is that what's happening? As the behavioral panelists suggested, do Candace and Don both have guilty knowledge? And now is the public finding out a little bit of what they may have been holding inside? Remember that first interview with Don, and his oldest son, and he's like holding him right here. If the oldest son of the four, youngest, knew what had happened to Summer, and I'm sure he likely did, those kids probably had this deep fear instilled in them if they were told, oh, you better not tell anyone what really happened to Summer or else the same thing could happen to you. I thank God in heaven that those boys are nowhere near their parents anymore. They're able to open up now and I pray they never get their boys back. If any of this story is true, I pray those boys are off and go to good homes and are able to heal from this tragedy. But Don had his arm around that little boy almost controllingly and he just looked down like he didn't want to speak. He was likely traumatized as well. Drugs make people do awful things. We've seen the history and just because a person has a history, a DUI or a drug problem, of course it doesn't mean they're going to give up their kids for ransom or things like that. 
But with the continued history and the fact that Don and Candace don't seem as if they were recovering addicts from the behavior displayed on many different YouTube channels in many different interviews, it appears that there was still a problem with substance abuse. And so we hate that Summer had to live in that environment. I am glad she is out of it and she is likely in heaven, dancing with Jesus, swinging on her swing in heaven and not around that mess she had to endure for five years. As hard as the details are to hear about what may have happened to her, I do pray it was just quick, straight up to Jesus, because it's hard to think of anyone going through that, let alone a five-year-old girl. So will we find out more about what really happened to Summer? I think this call might be a good indication, a good clue. Perhaps the little boy again knew what happened to her but didn't know what the adults may have done to cause her to disappear or get gone. I pray for breadcrumbs, revelation. I pray law enforcement gets the break they need because criminals or drug addicts or whomever, they often sometimes think they are smarter or wittier than they really are. I hope what happens is they're able to find some kind of breadcrumbs. I pray the little boy's minds, all of her brothers are able to open up more and just unveil memories that repressed or hidden that helps lead law enforcement to finding Summer Wells, especially finding what happened to her and just shutting down the whole operation, whoever harmed her. And speaking of harm, let's just close with Psalm 121, seven through eight. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. There are words we have to hold on to, I have to hold on to, not in some religiosity sort of way. I think like Don Wells spouts scriptures just because it sounds good and he's trying to like put this mask up and cover up some heinous things. I can't imagine, I mean, addiction must be so difficult. I just hate the collateral damage. I just hate the damage that it causes to families and especially children. It's one thing for a beast of an addiction to affect an adult, but when it spills over into harming the kids, it's a bridge too far, but I guess as long as we're in this world, those things will happen. That's why I'm always, come quickly, Jesus, please, and just especially stop the kids from being hurt or injured as a result of decisions made that they had no control over. We will end up seeing what is truth and what is not. Many times these rumors that leak out about crime cases eventually end up being true. We end up hearing about them in court and we end up seeing them verified. Will this one? Summer Wells, the call, end up being verified? It could be. It feels heavy. And of course, people can always create things for drama and storylines and all of that, but this might not be one of them. Of course, it's not official, but it could end up being official. I've seen it happen in other crime cases. Rumors, little comments, and everything turn into data shown in an arrest affidavit. Let's pray we see some kind of arrest affidavit coming in the Summer Wells case. Prayers to God and Jesus and we also pray that she didn't endure any pain. And I know it sounds crazy, but in cases like this especially, I often pray that God just snatches the child's soul before they even felt anything. I tend to like to believe that when, you know, you hear horrible things like that. When you hear horrible stories like that. Let's just leave it here for now. Stay tuned. We'll keep covering this case and others, and I will keep you posted about what's going on with the channel. Thanks always for watching. Take care.